Bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Hello again and thanks for joining us. I'm Carla Showali and this is Comcast Newsmakers. This hour's newsmaker is Janet Doman, Director of the Institutes for the Achievement of Human Potential. And our topic today is Brain Injured Children. Thanks for joining us today, Janet. Nice to Great see you. Great to be here. Seems like I'm meeting the whole family. I just met mm -hmm. Douglas last That's week. wonderful. Yes. This is a really interesting time for you because I know you're coming up on your 50th birthday. Yeah, 2005 well, well, I've been on our present Institute. campus for 50 years very wow. soon. That's wonderful. Well, tell us a little bit about brain injured children because what is the range of a brain injured child and what does that mean? Well, the kids that we see range all the way from kids who may be in a coma, may be blind or deaf or insensate or paralyzed, all the way to kids who may have just trouble in mobility, crawling, creeping or walking or maybe learning problems or intellectual problems, all the way to kids who might be in school but having problems uh, with hyperactivity or attention, and uh, all the way to kids who just might have a mild reading problem. Okay. And everything between those, the, that comatose kid and, and the reading problem, every level of kid you can imagine. So I'm, so I'm sure that sometimes brain injured children are called by many different names, and I imagine that would be very confusing for an adult. It's an excellent question. It's probably one of the biggest problems for parents because there are so many labels for the brain injured child and most of those labels create confusion rather than clarity because they're really symptomatic descriptions whether it's cerebral palsy or mental retardation or autism. These terms are really old-fashioned terms that really pinpoint perhaps one symptom but all of these kids are brain injured kids. And, you know, to solve a problem, the first step is you have to say where the problem is. And the problem for all those kids is in the brain. Okay. And so how does the Institute treat a brain injured child? Well, first, we teach mom and dad about how the brain grows and why it grows the way it does because parents really are the answer. Um, we learned a long time ago that if we took all the things we were doing that were effective for um, treating brain injured kids and started to teach them to parents that then our kids could be home with mom and dad and that's when our results went from good to excellent right. because brain injured kids should be home with mom and dad so what we teach them is how uh, to stimulate the brain the brain literally grows by use it grows by use and so everything that helps to grow the brain is going to improve the condition of the brain injured child. And I, it's funny you say that because my mom didn't even know this with my brother who grew up with cerebral palsy. Yeah. He didn't talk for many, many years, but she kept talking in his ear constantly. And then one day at the age of three, he starts talking. Well, see, mothers, particularly mothers, are so intuitive. Mm -hmm. All the things that mothers do instinctively and intuitively with their brain injured children are almost always right. Mm -hmm. um, mothers, mothers really know. They know their kids better than anyone else. And generally, when they follow their instincts, 99% of the time we find they're right. And there are very few professions in which a professional will be right 99% of the time. Mothers have a good track record. I believe that. What can families do to get help if they suspect that they even have a brain injured child? Well, first of all, get an education. Start learning. Um, Certainly they could visit our website. There they're going to find a lot of information about all the different types of brain injury. Mm -hmm. And that will be a good introduction. Uh, the website will also help them get um, books or literature that they can read. And uh, we give courses throughout the year for parents of brain injured children. We just had one and we'll be giving another one in December. And that's a week long course in which we literally teach parents um, how to evaluate their own child, see where that child's problems may be and by the end of that week they know how to design their own program to go home and actually start to solve the problem. Do you think health professionals are doing better in the area of diagnosing children who have brain injured problems? Well I problems? think that now more and more um, professionals are saying this child is brain injured and I think that's a very big step in the right direction. Otherwise all of these diseases, um, cerebral palsy, autism, these are these are a kind of a way to put a kid in a drawer and close the drawer and forget him Absolutely. instead of solve his problem. Always good information. Thanks so much for joining oh, us, Janet. Our pleasure. This hour's newsmaker has been Janet Doman, director for the Institute of Human Achievement. I'm Carla Scholle. Thanks for joining us. The preceding has been a presentation of Comcast Newsmakers. Now, back to CNN Headline News.